Hello YouTube, here with another pipe video. And in today's video, I'm smoking my uh, amphora with some good old Elizabethan mixture in it. Pretty tasty. So, uh, yesterday was our pipe club meeting, our monthly uh, pipe club meeting, and uh, it was pretty awesome, pretty awesome. We did it outside near uh, near the water in Paul's Bow. Met some new people. Uh, tried some tobaccos that I'd never had before. A Deception Pass from the Seattle Pipe Club, I tried that. Um, a couple others, I don't remember what they were though. So. Oh, uh, CD Blend, Country Doctor Blend by... Uh, well, I don't remember. Somebody will know. Somebody in the comments, I'm sure, will know. But I had a great time. Great time. The weather was... tame. It's been quite, quite warm here in Washington. Luckily, we had... Uh, Adam found us a spot in some shade. And we were able to stay moderately cool. But today, I am, uh, you know, wanted to take some time to smoke, and I didn't really clean my pipes that I was smoking uh, yesterday, after I finished smoking them, so I wanted to take some time today and run a pipe cleaner or two through them, and you know, make sure, get them a little uh, cleaned out. But, that's what I thought I'd do while I was making a video. I smoked on my uh, Erickson, uh, 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 Peterson, and a uh, Beckler Meersham. Good, good smokers. Good smokers. So uh, what I'm doing to clean them is I've got a little jar of... I don't remember what type of alcohol it is, but it's some type of alcohol. I'll keep it jarred up in there. A little pipe cabinet thing. And uh, I'm running a smooth pipe cleaner through them. Just to kind of moisten up all that goop in there, I'm gonna take a bristled one. I'm gonna take it through here and squirrel it around a little bit. See if I can't uh, get some of this nasty shit to break up. I haven't really been keeping up with a lot of the pipe videos lately. Well, it's kind of shameful for me to say that, but I've been uh, been working some overtime and. I feel like I've got a lot of balls that I'm juggling. You know, every time I pick up another hobby or reintroduce myself to a hobby or something like that, one of my current hobbies usually falls to the wayside. And uh, being that I'm working overtime, you know, keep trying to trying to keep up with motorcycles and pipes and you know the home life and work and this stupid drive I have, pipes are. Uh, Making videos, not pipes. Making videos has kind of fallen into the wayside a little bit, but hopefully all of this will rectify itself soon. It will uh, calm down and I'll have a little more time. A fewer balls that I'll be juggling. So I, I've noticed that I can't really make a short video. It's pretty difficult for me to do. So I'm not going to try. So I recently got rid of my... Uh, my 2000 Heritage Softail because I had a uh, my, my uh, flywheel split inside of the crankcase they just kinda slid apart and it was about a 3000 I don't have all the tools to pull the bearings on these newer Harleys so taking it to the shop it was, be, it was gonna be about a three thousand dollar fix to get it all fixed up and stuff so I saw an opportunity to get uh, a vintage motorcycle, one that, you know, more more along my style, one with a little bit more character that's not so cookie cutter. You know, these modern Harleys are fairly, uh, they're pretty well a dime a dozen. You see, you've seen one, you've seen them all. But what people do with these older ones, it's it's amazing. It, it, it's so much character, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty neat. And, they're almost like works of art themselves. I like I like looking at them, and 
No, I sold I sold my heritage and went out and bought um, a 1970 Ironhead. That's right. I went from a big twin to an iron head. And I love it. It's it this is my third third sporty. And uh they haul ass, man. They are they are fun bikes. They maneuver so much better. Um they're just, just more fun to ride, I think, than those big bumbling uh things that Harley's pumping out now. No offense if you have one. I mean, good for you. The, the big twins are great too. But uh, I got an Ironhead, 1970 Ironhead, and I rode it around for a little bit. Got her tuned up. Got some new wheels on it. Rode it over to my wa wife's um, work. She lives. She she lives. Good lord. I hope we live together. She works down a dirt road. It's quite bumpy. And. Uh, about a quarter mile on the dirt road, and I went down there and seen her on the bike, and came back, went to the store and got some chocolate. Came back out and I noticed oil everywhere. I was like, well, what is that? Well, it's old. You know, it's gonna leak oil. That's what I thought to myself. Looked around just a little bit, just to make sure. To my surprise, there was a honking crack going from, you know, nearly the bottom of the primary all the way up to the rear jug. Like, ooh, it's gonna be a problem. Luckily, these older bikes, uh, they're easier to work on. Far fewer specialty parts are needed to, to work on them. So uh, I contact the shop I go to, Larry Cycle Barn. Fantastic shop, by the way. If you're in the area and you need to take your Harley to be worked on, Larry Sycamore, where'd go? Took it over to him, and they sent it off to the welder to get welded up. The welder's like, ooh, I don't know if we can do it, but they're going to try. So if they don't do it, you know, those iron head motors are pretty cheap online. I have to swap it out, I think, but hopefully it won't come to that. Anyways, I think my video has gone off long enough. I hope I didn't insult anybody with my uh, blabbering about... Big twins being lumbering beasts, ride like boats. If I did, my apologies. No, oh, they're all fun. It is what you like. Whatever, whatever you like. Whatever makes you happy. But this video is now eight minutes long, and I'm sure there are like four people willing to watch a video of this length. So I'm gonna kill it. I'll talk to you guys later.